Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're joined today by London Mayor Ed Holder and the Medical Officer of Health for the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. We'd like to welcome the media who are in attendance for this afternoon's briefing and invite them to submit their questions using the question forum here on Microsoft Teams. We'd also like to remind those asking questions this afternoon to please indicate your name and media <coughs> and who your question is directed to. We'd like to welcome those tuning in this afternoon on Rogers Television, Rogers Facebook page and YouTube <coughs> channel, as well as those listening on Global News Radio AM 980 and those watching on the CTV London website. We'll get to the opening statements right away and we'll start with London Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Well, thank you, Beth, and good, af good afternoon, everyone. You know, lately it seems like our case counts are a lot like the weather. You know, some days we're up and some days down. Other days you're, you're, we're kind of right where you think uh, you'd expect. Well, after two uh, straight days with case, count, case counts in the low single digits, we've now had two straight days in the low 20s. You know, regardless of how inconsistent these daily case counts might appear, all of us need to be relentlessly consistent with our approach. I'm not just talking about following public health gu guidelines and COVID bylaws. Goodness knows we've talked about that uh, since March. I'm also talking about our mental approach. It's easy to become discouraged when we have a few days like we've had the last 48 hours. You might think, what's the point in following the rules? Doesn't make a difference. Along the same lines, when we've had days in the low single digits. You might think, I can let my guard down a bit. Seems we have things under control. Well, as tempting as it may be, we cannot allow ourselves to fall into either of these mental traps. We must stay focused and committed regardless of how and what we see in the numbers on a daily basis. That's not to suggest they don't matter. They absolutely do. However, what matters more are the actions we take and that we do so consistently without interruption. Don't get too high when numbers are low. Don't get too low when numbers are high. We've all heard the extremely encouraging news recently about highly effective vaccines. This kind of thing appears no longer a question of if, but more a question of when. And the direction seems to support uh, sooner rather than later. Here's what I believe. There is and will be an end in sight to all of this. That much I believe. For a long time, we, we weren't able to say that. Now I can. But what's also true is that we're not there yet. And we won't be there next week, won't be there next month. The finish line is in sight, but right now for the next few months, we need to ensure all of us are healthy enough to make it there. That requires me, requires you, all of us to remain focused and committed, not just to the public health guidelines, but to each other. There's a path forward and we're gonna get there. And as we work our way towards that point, let's make sure we continue looking out for ourselves and each other and make sure we all get there together. Those are my thoughts right now. Over to you, Dr. Mackey. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so a couple of heavy days uh, here in Middlesex, London, in terms of case counts, we've had 23 today, 21 yesterday. Uh, these are uh, quite high. Anytime we're over 20, it's definitely uh, numbers that are that are uh, a huge uh, workload for the health unit, but also an indication of significant spread in the community. Uh, fortunately, another day with uh, no new fatalities to report, so that's good news. A bit of a glimmer of hope in the provincial numbers, which seem to have stayed steady uh, for the past five days or so. Uh, it's hard to, uh, you know, it's hard to imagine that uh, we're saying 1,200 cases in Ontario is a good day. Uh, it's still twice the highest peak we had in the first wave, uh, but uh, seeing things steady, level out at least for a few days uh, is positive because uh, they really have been climbing steeply recently. Uh, in the context of all of this, as uh, as you all, all know, the provincial government has implemented a new framework that uh, puts in place specific restrictions at different levels of disease spread in the communities across Ontario. Uh, we were moved into the protect level on Monday, and that's where this uh, Middlesex and London region remains at the current time. Uh, in that context of the new framework, we've done a detailed review of all of the orders and the one instruction to business uh, instruction to businesses that were in place here in London and Middlesex uh, under the authority of the Medical Officer of Health and uh, the uh, health unit. And we're able to at this point withdraw five of those six documents. Uh, so you'll recall that uh, back in the summer we 
we placed section 22 orders on uh, vehicles for hire and transit and separately on personal service settings around masking. Uh, the, the mask uh, orders are essentially covered now in the provincial uh, masking guidelines. So we're able to withdraw those two orders. Uh, since then, we also put an instruction in place for all businesses in Middlesex and London to mask anyone in indoor public spaces. That is now covered by the provincial uh, masking regulation as well. So we're able to draw those two orders and instructions all around masking. Uh, on the three section 22 orders that we issued uh, about uh, about uh, a month ago now, we had committed to reviewing those, doc those documents at the four week mark and that is uh, this week. So what will be happening as of uh, Friday at midnight is two of those orders will be revoked, those being the personal services setting order uh, around not providing services where an individual uh, has to be unmasked to receive the service without additional protection. That is essentially completely covered under the new framework, uh, Ontario framework with us at the protect level. Uh, the other one that we're withdrawing for the same reason is uh, the order around restaurants and bars that is again covered now completely under the new provincial uh, framework for at the tech level where we are and where we certainly will be for the foreseeable future if not higher in the framework. So uh, the third uh, order that was issued four weeks ago, the order around sport and recreation fitness. So, uh, that order is uh, mostly covered under the new framework, but there are some components that remain uh, important, particularly around limits on uh, team sports in terms of people on a roster and uh, players on, on a, a field of play at the same time. Uh, those had been in, in place prior to the framework uh, across Ontario. Uh, when the framework came into place, they were only maintained for the higher levels of uh, disease activity. So, uh, so we're keeping that uh, Section 22 order in place for an additional four, four weeks and of course we will review that order again at the four week mark. Uh, I want to take the time to thank everyone who is willing to come forward with their thoughts on those orders. Uh, we had a lot of dialogue uh, over the last several weeks, uh, you know, conversations with uh, people who are operating facilities, who are players, parents, all sorts of people who were concerned about business and or concerned about the spread of COVID. Um, and uh, those have all been very uh, helpful in terms of coming to the place that we're at now. Uh, the, uh, the sports order, part of the reason we're maintaining it in place is that the discussions we've had haven't indicated that the order that we have will place any additional burden on businesses over and above the provincial framework. Uh, certainly the order, uh, you know, there, there were some, especially in the yoga community who were concerned about the order uh, that we had in place locally, but the uh, provincial framework actually goes beyond that. So where we had, you know, a limit of 12 to a class and two meter separation, the provincial framework uh, protect has a limit of 10 to a class and three meter separation, which is obviously more stringent. Uh, so, you know, withdrawing the section 22 order wouldn't help that industry at this point. And it seems clear that the team sports have been able to adapt to the order. So, uh, and in fact, you know, there may have been a benefit to uh, businesses. People are still able to get their team sports in. Uh, and you might, you know, because of the limits on rosters, uh, you might have actually seen an increase in the number of teams registering. So uh, we don't see a benefit from a business perspective with, to withdrawing that order. And we do see potential downsides on the COVID-19 front. So. Um, so that's why that one is being maintained. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're completely aligned with the provincial framework and uh, really happy that we have that document in place now to uh, guide public health work across the province. Great, thanks very much, Dr. Mackey and Mayor Holder for those opening statements. We'll get to the questions right away. There are a number in queue here this afternoon. So we'll start with the first question, it is from Steve Young with CTV News and 1290 CJBK. It is for Mayor Holder. Mayor Holder, an anti-mask protest is scheduled for Victoria Park this Sunday. 
What's your message to the people that will be flaunting the mask bylaw in your city? Are you concerned about the potential health impacts as well as the impact on downtown business? Well, hi, Steve. Let me be clear. These people want attention and recognition, and I'm not prepared to give them up. Sorry, my computer just froze, so I, uh, sorry about that, some technical difficulties here. Thank you, Mayor Holder, for that response. Um, their next question comes from Steve Young with CTV News and 1290 CJBK. This question is for you, Dr. Mackey. What are your thoughts on this anti-mask protest and the fact that there have been a couple others in our region within the last couple of weeks? Well, you know, I think you know where I'm at on this sort of thing at this point, Steve. Uh, unfortunately, this keeps coming up. Uh, I think the, the mayor has nailed the political issue. This is uh, folks seeking attention for themselves. Uh, masks are now very well established as uh, important, an important control measure in reducing the spread of COVID-19. Uh, no one's ever said that they are perfect, but they definitely contribute to reducing the spread. And so uh, anyone that is against that is essentially rooting for COVID-19 uh, instead of uh, for the health of the population. Thanks very much, Dr. Mackey, for that response. Our next question comes to us from Jennifer Beeman with the London Free Press. It is for you, Dr. Mackey. Are our weekly stats, the London area case rates per 100,000 and percent positivity approaching the orange level restrict threshold? Yeah, I appreciate the, the question, Jennifer. I would certainly say we're on the high end, if not approaching the orange level for the case counts alone. Uh, the framework does have a number of indicators, so it's not just about case counts. They also look at percentage positivity and uh, the capacity of hospitals, ICU and public health in the region. Uh, and we're actually doing very well from those metrics. There are some patients in hospital, uh, but the demand on ICU is pretty limited. And uh, at this point, public health capacity is holding up. Our percentage positivity is actually very low compared to the provincial levels. Uh, and so uh, it's not clear that we would be moved up uh, in the coming days, but that is certainly something that could happen in the next few weeks. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. And just a follow up to that from Jen Beeman with the Free Press. Do you know when the province re reviews the criteria that would determine which category a region is in? Yeah, our understanding of the provincial process is there is a, a review by the folks in the office of the Chief Medical Officer of Health sort of midweek. It's usually based on data from the previous week, which has been, you know, standardized and, and assessed uh, and made sure that it is, you know, act accurately depicting the process. Public health units can also submit any additional information if there really is a deterioration from that previous week. Uh, and, you know, we certainly did so, for example, last week uh, when we saw those uh, very high numbers over the weekend. And, uh, and then the final determination is made uh, either Thursday or Friday. And of course, uh, because of the policy implications, my understanding is that those decisions all go to cabinet. So uh, that seems to be the, the uh, cycle for decision making. And it is happening on a week to week basis. Uh, my understanding is that and the the uh, you know our jurisdiction is quite likely if they have a, a significant increase in cases to be moved up. Uh, if the cases come down, they won't necessarily be moved down right away. We really don't want people sort of ping ponging back and forth between different levels of protection. So they would certainly be up for a matter of weeks. Exactly how how long uh, isn't entirely clear. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Another hear from Jennifer Beeman with the London Free Press. Dr. Mackey, are you concerned by the recent number of LHSC staff testing positive for COVID-19? Well, I think that anytime uh, healthcare staff are testing positive, uh, it's, uh, it's something to pay attention to. The reassuring thing from my perspective is that, you know, they've got an excellent occupational health and safety team at LHSC uh, and uh, lots of I mean, they're 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 real leaders in terms of infection prevention and control. Uh, and so, you know, when you see folks testing positive there, you can be sure that um, the hospital 
is taking that very seriously and putting measures in place to control any potential spread. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey. Our next question comes to us from Andrew Graham with Global News Radio AM 980. It is a question for both Dr. Mackey and Mayor Holder. Ontario Health Minister and Deputy Premier Christine Elliott recently revealed that the province is set to receive more than 2 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines early next year. Does the MLHU or the mayor have any insight into what London and Middlesex County can expect to see from that order? Have there been any discussions about that distribution? So Dr. Mackey, why don't we start with you and then over to Mayor Holder. Sure, uh, there's a uh, national framework actually for prioritizing the groups that would be at greatest risk uh, and or of, of greatest risk of spreading COVID-19. Uh, so, so that certainly is available, you know, identifies, uh, you know, people that are elderly, people that have significant under, underlying disease, and uh, people who work in healthcare that can potentially spread illness to vulnerable populations. Uh, and so, you know, that framework will be very useful for prioritizing. Uh, like uh, is often the case with influenza vaccine, you know, the arrival of the vaccine won't necessarily match uh, the demand of you know everyone to get it at once and so that does become a logistical challenge to get it out as efficiently as possible but also to make sure that it goes to those who need it most first. Um, the In terms of allotments uh, there haven't been any uh, formal indications from uh, the province of what our allotment would be. You know this this region uh, represents about three percent of the population of Ontario uh, so if you use that figure, you, you'd get probably a ballpark of uh, the doses, we, doses that we would receive. Thank you very much. And Mayor Holder? Thanks very much. I've not had a direct conversation with the Minister of Health, but I would imagine that uh, priority uh, would have to be given to those at greatest risk. And, and, and certainly, as the Medical Officer of Health has indicated, those with underlying conditions. But in addition to that, uh, all of our frontline workers and first responders who deal most directly uh, with the public, I would imagine those would be the, the, the first priorities. Thank you very much, Mayor Holder and Dr. Mackey for that response. We do have another question here from Andrew Graham with Global News Radio AM 980. It is for you, Dr. Mackey. A video has surfaced on the Instagram account London blog that was allegedly filmed inside the kitchen of Delilah's. The video appears to show staff without PPE and not physically distancing. Has the MLHU seen this video? And if so, which I don't believe we have, um, do that. Do we have any comment on that? Yeah, I haven't personally seen the video, Andrew, but I can tell you that, you know, working without PPE, not physically distancing. I mean, we know these are risk factors for spread. So if that is happening, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it were contributing to the spread of uh, COVID-19. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. And just to follow up to that, Ashley Gobias from the London, uh, sorry, from the Western Gazette did have the same question. Um, however, the follow up is, is the health unit investigating the video or or would we be investigating the video? Yeah, we're, we're uh, I mean, again, I don't think we have it yet. Uh, you folks often get these things before we do. Uh, so once we have it, we'll certainly take a look. Uh, our role in the situation where there is an outbreak, uh, as you've as we've identified at Delilah's, is that you know we work with the facilities to make sure that they're safe. Uh, whenever they can't demonstrate that they're safe, then uh, they're asked to uh, remain closed. And so you know that that's the approach that we'll take here. Um, you know wh whenever that video is from, uh, whatever it's showing. Uh, you know, you can you can be sure that those are the exact sorts of issues that we uh, work with restaurants on. And again, this is a situation where uh, in the vast majority of situations, everyone is doing their best. Uh, sometimes we get people that are either lax or rushing or for what, whatever reason aren't following the rules. And uh, it's our job to uh, remind them, make sure that they are. And that's what we're doing in this case. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey, for that follow-up response. Our next question comes to us from Matthew Trevithick with AM980 CFPL. Dr. Mackey, given the province is expected to unveil more restrictions in COVID hotspots in Ontario tomorrow, is the health unit anticipating further restrictions in London and Middlesex, such as a move to Orange in the near future? 
So, you know, again, this is a cabinet decision based on the ministry folks analysis of data. Uh, we haven't had any discussions with ministry at this point, uh, but, you know, the, the really helpful thing is that we have a framework. It is standardized and decisions are being made by data. So, you know, when you when you look at those criteria, uh, we essentially met four of the five criteria to move up to protect. Our percentage positivity is still quite low, but in terms of moving up to uh, the uh, the next orange level of restriction, uh, you know, we would only meet probably one of the criteria. Uh, so um, I don't know for sure what the decision will be. But again, we haven't had discussions about that. Thanks very much, Dr. Mackey. And, uh, and along those same lines, Steve Young from CTV News did have a question about the orange zone as well. And, and if you could see us, see the Middlesex London Health Unit moving into that orange zone as soon as this weekend. Yeah, it, it, same same response. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't uh, speculate on, on what how the provincial government is going to implement the framework here. Um, just to note that we're at sort of one of the five criteria being met at this point for moving up. Thanks very much, Dr. Mackey. Our next question comes to us again from Matthew Trevithick with AM 980 CFPL. It is for you, Dr. Mackey. LHSC is now reporting 11 coronavirus inpatients in its care, three more than Monday, along with 15 infected staff members. Is there any insight the health unit can provide when it comes to how current hospitalization numbers compare to previous months? Yeah, this is certainly the highest that we've seen the hospitalization numbers since the beginning of the second wave. Uh, in the first wave, as this moved through long term care and in this region to a lesser extent, retirement homes, uh, you definitely saw uh, high levels of hospitalizations and even ICU use, uh, which we haven't reached at this point uh, in London and Middlesex in the wave, second wave. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Our next question comes to us from Matthew Trevithick, AM 980 CFPL. Dr. Mackey, have there been any additional cases linked to the workplace outbreak at Delilah's? Uh, as far as I know, since the outbreak was declared earlier this week, there haven't been additional workplace cases uh, linked to Delilah's. Thanks, Dr. Mackey. Our next question comes to us from Lini Lambrink with CBC London. It is for you, Dr. Mackey. There are 15 cases of COVID-19 among staff at LHSC and another 55 are currently under investigation. What do you make of that? Do you have a message for healthcare workers? Well, I mean, uh, this is a sign that the hospital is taking those cases seriously. Under investigation uh, likely means that either those folks have had close contact with positive cases uh, or they have uh, symptoms are being tested. Again, all of that is a sign that contact tracing is working. Uh, those people would be in isolation regardless of whether they're, they're uh, you know, close contacts or they have symptoms. Uh, so again, for, for people who are going to be patients at LHSC, we're talking about a very low level of risk. Great, thanks very much, Dr. Mackey. That leaves us with no more questions in queue for this afternoon. So thanks very much, Mayor Holder, Dr. Mackey, for joining us this afternoon. Thanks also to the viewers for tuning in and those who are listening and on the radio this afternoon as well. We will be back to join you on Monday afternoon at two o'clock for the next media briefing. So until then, have a great rest of the day and a great weekend.